And I tell my kids, I love your mother more than I love you. I chose her. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we say that to our kids too. Access more. Find a reason to be here that's bigger than you are. From the creators of Jesus Revolution. Something about that little girl. I think I'm supposed to help. Based on the inspiring true story. My name is Sharon. I'm good at plenty of things. Taking no for an answer ain't one. Find your purpose. Make a difference. You want to go on an adventure? Yeah. Ordinary Angels. Starring two-time Academy Award winner Hilary Swank and Alan Richson. Rated PG. Parental guidance suggested. In theaters February 23rd. Life is like a roller coaster, but it is so much better when we go through it together. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bray podcast. Our theme this season is reset body, mind, and soul. And my guest today is comedian Jason Earls. And he's joining us because laughter is so, so good for the soul. Once voted Seattle's favorite comedian, Jason has been president of the Christian Comedy Association, and he's been featured on Focus on the Family, TBN, and his award-winning Kids Beach Club TV series. Now, Jason's a comic, but he's also a pastor, and he loves to make people laugh. Jason, welcome to the show. We on a roller coaster, baby. <laughs> <We're on it. laughs> Let's go. Ooh. First of all, I, I'm, I'm honored to be here. And Thank uh, you. just Man, the, the, the set here is beautiful, intimidating. Uh, intimidating. Uh, just because of all the flowers and the, gra- the greenery, <laughs> even on your computer. I'm like, let's go. I should have brought some flowers. I'm sorry. My wife won't get me for not bringing you flowers, but <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. Good. I'm glad you're here. I love I love to laugh. I grew up with comedians. Absolutely, you did. The some great, of the best. Some of the best. Bob Saget, Dave Coulier. Yes. And, and hung around a lot of comedians in my day, too. I will have to say, though, I had to retrain my brain when I got older and understood that the comedy was probably not that honoring to God (laughs) in some of the ways that I grew up with, you know, but I love comedy. I love to laugh. You could tell me your best dad jokes and I will be your best audience. Well, you know, as a professional, I try to stay away from dad jokes. (laughs) I'm sure you do. That's too bottom shelf. You You know, no, no, you know, no, not to the uh, dad joke people. No, no. uh, I expect more from you, but I'm just saying I'm a girl that loves to laugh. Let's go. I really do. Sweet. So it is, um, we, we actually met in Dallas. You live in Dallas. Yes. I met you and your wife when Heather McFadden and Tara Lee Cobble and I were hosting a live podcast event yes. in Dallas. And you and your wife came backstage and it was so great to meet you. And I think it is really surprising, at least when I hear it, most people are like, wait, you're a comedian and a pastor. Candace. So, so wait, were you like preaching at the pulpit and you just realized you were really funny and you had to take the show on the road? Or were you at the comedy club and you're like, um, my Jesus jokes just aren't going over that well? <laughs> yeah, right. You know, find another day job, buddy. <laughs> no, so here is here's how that first of all, I did this thing called a life map. This was after I started doing comedy. Now, in high school. I realized that I wasn't ever the best academically. I wasn't. Mm-hmm. I was in the band, but wasn't the best. I was only first chair when, when the first chair guy didn't show up on challenge day. Um, wasn't the best athlete. But one thing I knew I was great at that nobody could touch in my school was the ability to make people laugh. Mm. In fact, one day, i never forget this girl named uh, Tamika. Tamika was her name. I said something in the hallway. She said, Jason, you funny. And for the first time, Candace, the lack of confidence, Jason Earl said, I know it. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, yeah. got some hair on my chest now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I, I went to my dad. This was around my junior year. And I told my dad, I said, Dad, I got an announcement to make. Instead of going to college, I'm going to California, go to the improv, learn to be a comedian. And my pastor dad was like, you funny. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah you funny, funny boy. And so I, I kind of gave that up for a minute and went to college, went to, you know, went to Virginia State University, uh, got a degree and a wife. Come on, somebody. I love my wife. <laughs> <laughs> and then I actually um, I went to seminary 
And it was in seminary as I had started dabbling in comedy. I did this one class. Uh, my professor's name was Howard Hendricks, uh, amazing man. And we had to we had to interpret Acts three, the gate called beautiful, in our own creative way. Uh, it couldn't be anything that you know that normal. You couldn't preach. You couldn't write. You had to develop some creative way. And so, wow. and and the gate called beautiful. If you know the story. Uh, there's this man who's begging and he comes, you know, Peter and John come walking up and he begs. So what I said, I said, now where I'm from in Virginia, we associate beggars as wine oaks. Mm -hmm. And so I, I did this drunk man. I act like a drunk man asking, you know, Peter and John, come on, don't deny me three times, Peter. And, and then just begin to take the comedy dialogue of a, of a wine oak and then start hitting the biblical principle of it. And the class erupted, started clapping and standing up. And Howard Hendricks said, ladies and gentlemen, that is what I'm talking about right there. And it was at that instance, I was like, okay, I need to be doing this for real. But I never, Candace, you know, like growing up, did you ever have that person in church who everybody thought was funny, but they really weren't? Now, I know you grew up kind of around really professionals. Yeah. But there was always some people in church who like the church funny people. But they really yeah, but they're not. <laughs> right. Totally. So yes. I never wanted to be There's that person. probably all of my youth group leaders. <laughs> no offense. Right. And I was like, if I'm going to be funny and be in church, mm -hmm. I want to be great. Mm. So I started studying comedy. I started going to the comedy clubs. I started learning how to get up there and fail. Uh, one of your previous guests, I think it was Julie. Julie said this, sometimes disaster or failure is is to set up for greatness mm -hmm. and i saw so i was going to these comedy clubs and bombing like it was rough but it was i knew i was funny yeah and i was just like you know what i gotta make this stuff work and i just started working out and became huh you know where i am today now i'm on the podcast <laughs> with candace look at me mama <laughs> okay so tell me from that perspective as a comedian because i've gone to comedy clubs yeah and i've I've sat there before and I feel <sighs> terrible because I know I'm the worst audience member <laughs> that they want to be looking at because yeah. I've been seated in the front row a few mm -hmm. times and I'll be honest, I love, I love clean comedy yeah. and I love to laugh, but comedy can cross a line for me Absolutely. and then it's not funny to me anymore. Absolutely. And then I'm that person that you as the comedian are on that stage and you're looking at me with my arms crossed because, and I'm trying to be kind about it, but I'm uncomfortable. And because, and <laughs> because your arms are crossed and they see you sitting on the front row, they start talking to you. I don't know if that happens. Well, Dave Chappelle has gone after me. <laughs> but it was kind of, it was pretty funny. Yeah. It was pretty funny. But no, I've, I've, I've been in some comedy clubs where people are, they're new comics and they're trying to work it out. Yeah. And so I'm like, what goes through your mind when you're bombing? You're like, this is not relating to the audience. They're not finding it funny. Do, do you, do you pivot on the moment to try to find like, what do I know that might relate to them better? Yeah. Or do you just keep your set and go, I have to burn through this material to figure out what's going to work and what's not. I think it's both. It all depends on the purpose of you getting on stage. Okay. Your why for that moment. Typically, sometimes it's, I know this joke is funny. I somehow have to get the words organized in a way that makes it work. So I appreciate if I'm on stage and a person's not laughing, that's uh, that's helpful for me because I, I don't want the sympathy laughs. You know, yeah. I really I want to bust your gut on purpose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so that, that that that's the purpose then. But now if I'm somewhere where there's the comedy triangle is not lining up, I, I'm a comedy nerd. So forgive me. Uh, Tell us. Go with me. Yeah. So Melvin Hillitzer, who wrote a book called The Comedy Writing Secrets, he was a pro writing professor at Ohio uh, State University. And so he in this book, he talks about the comedy triangle, how everything has to line up. You can have the right comedian telling the right joke, but to the wrong audience, and it's not going to be funny. Mm -hmm. You have the right audience listening to the right comedian, but with the wrong joke, it's not going to work. Or the right joke with the right audience, but the wrong comedian is not going to work. Got so it. so sometimes it's like, okay, what's going on here? Why isn't it working? And if but if I'm invited and the goal is not to work out a joke, but just to be funny. You gotta, you gotta call that audible, you know, Omaha, Omaha, 
I know that's football. I don't know if you know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you got to you you have to be able to call that audible or ad lib and go yeah. into something else. Yeah. So okay. So when did you realize that you looked at things differently? Uh, probably when I started getting whippings from uh, being in church and saying, <laughs> asking questions. Uh, it's well, probably if I go back to, I've always seen stuff that most people don't see. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, like growing up in church, there was this lady who she was a praise and worship leader, but she talked like she had been smoking cigarettes since she was like two years old. She literally get up, good morning, everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and she's like, come on, wow, well, let's all stand and lift our hands up and worship. And I would ask my mama, like, mama, is that, is that a man? Uh -huh. And my mom like, shut up, that's Sister Wallace. Uh -huh. And I'm like, that sounds like Mr. Wallace. And, you know, so I'm just yes. observing things like that. Yeah. Or why do y'all keep telling me to kiss that lady on the cheek? And, you know, she's got, you know, for little kids. <laughs> You're you real know. honest. Yeah, <laughs> right. But then what, what happened, especially as I started doing comedy in primarily churches, mm -hmm. even looking at the Bible. Mm-hmm. And not and not in a negative, you know, in a dishonoring way, but there's certain things that I look at in the story and like, hey, what what was going on here? Like the man with the withered hand, when Jesus showed up at the temple and saw him with the withered hand, told him to step forward. And Jesus stopped this process to talk to the scribes and Pharisees about why he should be healing. And I'm like, what was the man with the withered hand doing? Like he was standing there the whole time mm -hmm. with his hand out. Mm hmm. Why did Jesus was talking? I know he's like, will y'all shut up? Will y'all shut up? As soon as he healed me, I'm going to slap all of y'all. That's, that's Guys, if you're listening to this, you got to go to YouTube and watch it. So okay? I just, yeah, so stuff like that is, I don't even try to think through this stuff. Yeah. I'm just trying to hear from yeah. the Lord in yeah. my quiet time. And this stuff pops up. So is, is most of your comedy, are you, are you talking about biblical things in your comedy? A great deal of it is. And I also, I also talk about family a lot. Okay. Because as you, you met my beautiful wife, uh, yeah. I love my wife. And, and how many kids do you have? We have six kids. <laughs> All yes. right. Their names are Aaron, Alexandria, Alicia, Andrew, Akeem, and Anaya. That's my first time making straight A's. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Lord is good. <laughs> so part, and part of my, my ultimate goal, Candice, is really to use comedy as a paint paintbrush to to create word pictures, paint word pictures of what our life with Christ should be like. Mm. That is my ultimate goal. My heart's desire is for when people listen to me do comedy or my wife on stage talking and laughing about marriage. My my hopes is that they're able to see what God wants for their lives or be encouraged to to step up their lives and walk a certain way. That's man, if I can accomplish that, man. So you're can, telling you're telling truth, you're speaking you're speaking life lessons with biblical principles in them, but with humor. Absolutely. And then, but sometimes some people would question if it's biblical. <laughs> okay. We don't have to get into yeah. theology on the show. No worries. Yeah, that's too funny. Yeah. How has telling jokes for a living changed you as a dad? The, the, I, mean, I don't know if you've experienced this, and mm -hmm. I, I love to hear your take on it. But for me, it, primarily because, you know, I've been more of a home base, like, you know, I travel a lot. But, you know, my studio's in my house. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times I'm working on these videos and my wife would call me like, hey, we having an issue with the kids. So I got to stop. OK, and cut. Hey, come here. Right. <laughs> Let's talk about this. Right. And that's so it's it's helped me be a little bit more sensitive to to how I shift mm -hmm. uh, and even what my kids see, because I. Just like at the end of my life, I want people to be able to say, man, I learned a lot from that comedian. I want my children to, to say, and my wife to say, I saw the same man at home that I did on stage. Yeah. And so that's the, like, how do I make sure that my kids don't become bitter towards what I do if I'm stopping what I'm doing to be dad? Uh, if I'm stopping or if I'm dad and I walk on stage, the camera starts and I'm acting different. 
Well, they're getting a different perspective. I don't know, does it make sense? Well, it totally makes sense because my kids have called me out on it. Yeah. When they've been maybe at an event for me, maybe there's a live red carpet or something. And I do, I have like, you know, I can turn it on yeah. once the camera's on. And it's not that I'm fake, but it's like, my camera personality Absolutely. comes out Absolutely. and then I'll walk away and you kind of like decompress a little right. bit, like the energy goes down. And my kids always laugh at me. They're like, mom, you're just like, you're, you're just <laughs> different. you like, you get on camera and it's just this like other person comes out yeah. and I'm like, well, I guess it's, I'm trained that way. It's like camera personality, but, but it's not, it's not different in the way that like, I feel like my conscience is at stake. Like right. I'm doing something that's not actually me or saying something that's me, but, but, yeah, I totally understand what you're saying. How, how do you how do you keep your kids? How have you kept your kids grounded? And because their mom is Candace, like how have you helped them develop their own, you know, make sure their identity mm -hmm. uh, isn't Candace, but it's. Yeah, it's such a it's such a good it's a good question. And it is. I I'm, think I'm more learning. challenging when you have parents that are in the public eye, whatever yeah. field that is. Mm -hmm. And especially if they're following in your footsteps in terms right. of your career, like if one of your kids was going to be a comedian or right. a pastor, they're probably always going to be compared to you. Yeah. No matter what they do in their right, no and matter how great they are or different they are, they're always going to be compared to you. Yes. And sometimes some of them can run to the comparison. Yeah. Like my son, we would go out, I'll take him to an event and he would introduce himself as, you know, my name is Aaron Earls and I'm, I'm Jason Earls son. Mm -hmm. Call me Aaron. Mm -hmm. And my wife saw, started seeing that and we were talking about it. So we were helping him like, Hey man, when you, when you introduce yourself, don't introduce yourself. You don't, don't say that you're Jason Earl's son. And so the next event, Candace, they were like, hey, how you doing? Who are you? He was like, well, I used to say I was Jason's son, but they said, stop saying that. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, no, bro, that's not, that is not what we mean, man. Right, you know? right. Yeah. Yeah, well, we could we could we could keep talking about kids, but I yeah. want to know a little something about your wife, Terry, yes. cuz she sounds amazing. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and I tell my kids, I love your mother more than I love you. I chose her. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we say that to our kids too. Yeah, right. It's like y'all going to grow up, start your own families, and we're going to be here. You all would not ruin our marriage. You would not. I refuse to. I tell my sons when I go out of town, mm -hmm. like, listen, you know, I'm, I'm entrusting y'all to make sure you honor God while I'm out of town. Yeah. You know, make sure you listen to mom and don't upset my wife. Yeah. That's that's your mama. Yeah. But that's my wife, too. And if you do, do you know how that how good that feels as a wife to hear that from her husband? I don't tell me <laughs> <laughs> it me because I've had those very specific conversations with my kids when we've gotten into beef with each other. Yeah. And. And sometimes I'm like, especially when my kids became teenagers and they're taller than me. And right. like, I just, I feel like the little person in the relationship and like, yeah. you know, and sometimes don't have a voice mm -hmm. and because, because kids will just not listen to you. If they don't want to listen, Absolutely. they're not going to listen and they, <laughs> they will dismiss you. I don't care how good of a parent you are. Kids can make you think what question all of that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so there have been moments that, you know, I've talked to my husband or, or, um, we've had conversations on the side, but like in those moments when he steps in and he's like, you don't get to talk to my wife that way. Yeah. It's not even like your mother. It's like, uh, this is my absolutely. wife. And there's something that's so protective and caring yeah. that as a woman feels mm. so great that my, because we are a team, your uh, husband absolutely. and wife, you're a team. And it's true. I, listen, I love my kids so much. I will do anything for them. But yeah. the reality is one day they're going to grow up, mm -hmm. hopefully get married, have a family of their own. I'm, <clears throat> my husband and I are going to be, alone again together Absolutely. i mean we're in it till the end together yep. so we have to keep our relationship healthy and good and fun and spicy and all the adjectives in between Absolutely. the kids and i'm all about <laughs> eradicating the kid focus house in yeah. other words a lot of times what, what, we, what terry and i see all the time is marriages that suffer because they don't keep 
the priority of family in the right alignment. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's mom and dad's relationship needs to make sure it's cultivated yep. before the children. Yeah. You know, is because we've looked up and we're like, you know what? We've we we've been going to football games, basketball games, soccer games, all these times. And we haven't spent any time with each other. Yeah. Our <laughs> lives have been revolved around who's going to pick up the kids. Who's going right. to, you know, who's got snack duty. Right. And, uh, you know, especially having multiple children, six. Yeah. Candace, we had two in soccer, two in football, <laughs> four different teams, and everybody made the playoffs. I, wow. Th th that makes my mind explode because I had three kids uh -huh. in sports. Yeah. And at three different schools at one point because mm -hmm. of ages. But just double that up. Listen, I was praying that they lost. I was like, Lord, let them lose in the name of Jesus. That Victory is yours. Keep it to yourself today. That, <laughs> like, that was me during my husband's hockey season. Yeah. So I'm like, I just want to go home. Don't make the playoffs. Absolutely. Please don't. Thank you, coach, for calling that play. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, I, I love that. We are we are firm believers in cultivating the marriage also yeah. and um, and not revolving the entire family only around the kids. Absolutely. And but but love bringing them in yes. with all the decision making and talking and family yes. and all that kind of stuff. But 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 Val and I, you know, we we are a unit together. Yeah. Indeed. And then we we are praying for the spouses of our children that they will have strong a strong unit with their with their spouse. Absolutely. When because they leave if, the if we model keeping kids before the marriage, we're setting our children's marriages up to be to fail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and that that's that's yeah. why Terry and I love what we do in terms of family. Does she ever just look at you and she's like, if you say another joke, just <laughs> stop. Just just so rolls this, her this, eyes at you. this is bad being that um I do what I do when I'm not on the comedy stage. But I'm probably the worst person to sit beside in church. <laughs> <laughs> You're a pastor. I'm a pastor, yes. Funny is funny. I just <laughs> Yes, you take it how you want to, but it's one thing. Are you making jokes or are you critiquing? No, I'm just Are you fidgety? Time. Are you No, what? it's <laughs> because we've been married. We Terry and I've been married for 23 years now. Uh-huh. And I've the you know, I've been pastoring for a short time. And so most of our our relationship being in church together is a very high value for both of us. Uh it's a way that we connect uh, with God on our own and together and with our family and with our community. Mm -hmm. But there's also a way that we just spend time together as well. Yeah. And so if something funny happens or I see something funny or there's my mind, it's hard to shut this comedy mind off. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's <laughs> reading something, if we're singing a song, this stuff comes up with, I, I just lean over and whisper to it. <laughs> Yeah. You know, either she, you know, talks between her teeth, like, will you be quiet, please? Yeah. Try not to yeah. laugh yeah. or nudge me. That's that's the nature of uh of so, so comedy has been good for your marriage. It has been. It in fact, before I became a pastor, a lot of people at our church were coming to us asking us to do their marriage counseling. Mm. It's the weirdest thing. Because we were one of the younger couples in the church. There were an an, an in leadership, there were many different couples that have been married longer than us, even our parents. But people were coming to us saying, hey, we're having marital challenges. Mm -hmm. Can we talk to y'all? Can y'all do our marriage counseling? And we would say, hey, they got some stuff at the church. And they're like, yeah, but we see what y'all have. Mm. And we would like for our marriage to marry that. What a testament. That's all right. Don't get you. I'm not supposed to be on here crying. Yeah. <laughs> no, what a testament to your marriage yeah, and how you yeah. value it. And then the two of you and the priorities that you're keeping. But what's, what's crazy is we didn't, I didn't think at first we were good at helping people because it's not like we were doing this on purpose. Like, right. It's not like right. we were waking up in the morning and say, Hey, let's make our marriage one that people can look at yeah. and want to mirror. It's we, oh. we follow yeah. a set of principles. And, yeah. and just try to always keep our heart postured or positioned in a way that if I'm wrong and, and, and me knowing how prideful I can be as a Jason Earl's man, always having my mind here where God can speak to me like, dude, you off mm. or dude. Yep. 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 You're right. You're right. As a man, you're right. However, as my husband, you're probably wrong. Mm. 
which is where. So I think people yeah. see that, and people see us consistently, um, you know, working together. There's nothing for us to. I don't know if this happens in your marriage, but sometimes going to church, you can get in a little tiff on the way to church. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and don't let it happen on communion Sunday. <laughs> it's like, dog, it, I got to apologize before I take communion. <laughs> we take communion every week at our church. Oh, that's great. We did it at our old church. So yeah, it's. Yeah, but I know sometimes, uh, yeah, those you, are kind of the worst but it's, mornings. But then you have to humble yourself. Absolutely. And it's the best thing that can happen. Do nothing with selfishness or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another is more important than yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That should be on a book somewhere, in a book somewhere. I don't. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> In 2024, delicious, safe, and convenient meal prep is just one box away. This is your year to ditch the mystery of the meat aisle and get American meat delivered to your front door instead. Subscribe to any box and they'll add over two pounds of pre-trimmed, better than organic chicken breast to your order for free. Not once, not twice, but every order for a year. Good Ranchers Chicken will change what you know about chicken. It's pasture raised, given zero antibiotics or vaccines, and is so tender and juicy, you won't believe it's the same meat you've been cooking most of your life. And when my Good Ranchers box showed up, everything was perfectly frozen. Simply go to GoodRanchers.com, pick your box, use my code CANDY, and enjoy $189 of free chicken in 2024, plus $20 off your first order. Stock your fridge with easy to prepare, clean, delicious meat all year long. If you're not sure which box to choose, try their brand new weekly essentials box full of pre-trimmed beef and chicken that helps you meal prep so you can save time without sacrificing flavor. Make sure you subscribe today and use my code CANDY to claim over $200 in free chicken and new year savings. GoodRanchers.com, American Meat Delivered. Do you think that that church people can be too serious sometimes? Ah, do I think <laughs> <laughs> it, it frustrates me. It's, uh, you know, it's I grew up in a church where they would come in church with an illegal Xerox copy of the Sunday school lesson. Slam it down on the desk and say this morning we're going to talk about joy. <laughs> How many of y'all got joy? I got it deep down in my heart. And I'm like, well, would you notify your face, please? It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. That, yes, it's, it is the truth. I didn't, I didn't understand growing up. I really did. How can all these people yeah. say that our loving God has saved them from hell, given yeah. them eternal eternal life, and nobody was happy? Yeah, I just I, that always confused me as a kid. Like, how in the world? Can can all these people be sad and mean? Yeah. Even when I, I don't want to preach, but the, preach, preach. <laughs> the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, joy. Mm -hmm. One third of the kingdom is joy. I, and, and why do we reject it so much? Why do we try to act all pious? I'm, there's there's a book called The Humor of Christ. It is one of the most difficult reads that, that I've had. I'm still, it's taken me some months to plow my way through it because it's written probably like 1920-ish. Okay. And what the author talks about is how much humor we miss in the Bible mm. because our own piety. There, there's a lot of humor in the Bible. There's a lot of humor that Christ used. And uh, go, go, yeah. I was like, you know what I just read the other day? I'm What's in the that? book of Job right oh. now. And it was like the best line I've ever heard. Okay, maybe not ever, but it was one of the best ones. But I, I kind of missed it the first time. Yeah. <clears throat> in the book of Job, Job is going through miserable things. Right. And he has these three so-called friends yeah. that are giving him really bad advice. Right. And so Job responds to them in the advice. And there's a line in there that he says back to them. And I'm paraphrasing. If only you would just shut your mouth and let <laughs> that be your wisdom. Oh, that is great. 
That is so good. I was like, oh, Job, that's so smart. Sometimes people think they are so wise. And I'm like, if you'd only shut your mouth. That is great. And be wise from keeping silent. (laughs) But But I'm like that. It made me laugh out loud reading that in the Bible. Yeah. There's another verse in Job. This is one of the funniest verses in the Bible, I think. It says, even my breath was offensive to my wife. <laughs> like, my goodness, how bad is your breath? <laughs> that in, in, in your darkest moment, this is the scripture that you pin. My breath was so bad. My wife was offended by that. I know quite a people can uh, identify with that verse. Yeah. It'd be weird yeah. if some woman gets that uh, tattooed. Like, that is my, <laughs> that's my life verse right there. <laughs> so the, so the, the book, I didn't mean to cut you off. Was there... Yeah, well, it's, but you get it. But there's humor in the Bible. There is humor in the Bible. So let's think back. And you're a professional actress. So it might be different from you. But typically, growing up in in a lot of churches, when somebody plays Jesus in the Christmas play, Mm -hmm. it's always. Yes. Yes. Jesus did not walk around like all pious. Yeah. And so like, but, but we, we associate that we, t- we go there in our mind uh, and maybe it comes from Be- a healthy place. I was going to say, I think a lot of people not to br- bring it too serious, but it comes from a place of reverence. No, oh. I, I, I'm not. But how far do we, how far do we take reference? In other words, some of the things that we reverence, it's not because God commands it, mm. but because in our own flesh, our pursuit of God makes ourselves feel good. Oh, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and so, totally. so again, so I think that's what happens. Yeah. So even when Jesus says it's easier for a rich man to go through the eye of a needle, mm-hmm. uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom mm-hmm. of God. For the disciples and in that culture, that was hilarious. But for us, we read that and we do the, you know, we do our spirit face. Everybody's got their spirit face. You know what it is, right? <laughs> <laughs> you probably never, you know, the spirit face. That's when you make that stink face when something's good. You're like, <laughs> so when we read that passage, we get really serious. Yeah. But what Jesus is saying is like, you know what? It's, it's easy for, it's easier for, let's say a Mack truck mm-hmm. to drive through the door of a Barbie house. Mm-hmm. Than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. It's like that's in Israel time. It's not that funny to us because we don't understand the context of uh, in that day that the eye of the needle was actually a doorway, a gate mm-hmm. to get into the city. And that only, you know, it was the door that people went through at night. So for a camel to go through this little man made, I mean, you know, short man door. Sure. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's hilarious. But we don't, we can't even. Fathom that now, my aunt, because we're so serious. Praise the Lord. So, <laughs> Are there jokes that you can't tell in church? We're going to talk about this on the podcast? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, what, absolutely. So, not, what, so here's the thing. Yeah. Candace, I've done pretty much majority of, well, a lot of the large churches that if you name in the country, I've done the, I've done the comedy show there. Okay. I've done the major family <laughs> ministries. Um, I'm invited there to do donor retreats. So for their donor bases, they'll have a go to a resort and I'm the guy that they'll bring in to do comedy. And for a lot of times in America, when it comes to Christian comedy, we view family friendliness as the standard. Mm-hmm. If this, com- this comedian is very family friendly, then he's safe. Mm-hmm. But I always say, man, the Bible isn't family friendly. You know, oh, it's yeah. Right. So, yeah. so family, fr- family friendliness isn't the standard Christ is. Mm. So there are some things that Christ talks about that that's not appropriate for kids. There are certain Bible verses that when I'm reading through the Bible with my kids or my wife is, and I'm in the other room, I'm like, Oh, they about to read that verse. Oh, here we go. How are we going to deal with sure. that? And sure. So I just think comedy and it's in its greatest form is authentic. Mm. And it's real. Mm-hmm. I think that I always say this. I was a president of a Christian Comedy Association, and I would always say it's going to be very difficult for Christian comedy to get an A-list comedian or uh, or a group of A-list comedians because the church nor do Christian comedians want to be truly authentic or want to welcome it. Mm. 
So if I'm going to talk about some things in the Bible that's not family friendly, it's always I'm like, people will say you've been inappropriate. And I'm always like, no, there are certain times in, in a message, in a sermon, we are like, OK, children's church is open. Child care is open. We're asking all the kids to go in there so we can have a real conversation. And so I did. Th there are a lot of jokes that I would sit around with some of the Christian comedians that mm -hmm. you may know mm -hmm. and be our friends with. We sit around in the writing room. And they're like, OK, Jason, what you got? And I'll tell one of the jokes. And they're like, you can't say that. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, fellas, sisters, we just sat around and just went through the jokes that y'all want to say in church, but y'all can't. I believe with biblical integrity and honor in Christ, you can address some of these things that may look at as non-family friendly and still be right. I'm, I'm telling you, I believe that. But... <clears throat> Because some people think you can't, I decided I did a comedy special called Seven Jokes I Couldn't Tell at Church. <laughs> and I went as I rushed to YouTube <laughs> right now to watch. And you know what the crazy thing is? Some of my closest comedy friends, buddies, yeah. writing partners, yeah. guys yeah. that I tour with, I couldn't even talk to them about it. Really? Because, yes, because it was some of them said, Jason, go ahead and tell that joke. It's gonna ruin your career. Huh. And I'm like, dude, you I got this from reading the Bible, bro. I, yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. I just I talked to a pastor. I actually recorded a comedy special <laughs> at a church. So that but I talked to a pastor. I said, hey, um, I got these jokes I want to tell. I'm gonna film it at your church, but here is a list of the jokes. And he was like, I love it. Mm. So I you know, I, I I'm I haven't seen the seven jokes. Okay. You can't tell yet. Okay. okay. I'm be watching right now. Everybody's this. intrigued. I know. I certainly am. But I do feel that there's a lot of things that as Christians, as the church, we're just we're we're not either comfortable talking about them or we feel like we're gonna get in trouble for sharing them when they're they're things that are in the Bible. They are natural human things. And it kind of, and listen, I understand as someone that's an outspoken Christian, yeah. you know, my faith precedes me, I hope. Right. And I always want to have integrity and Absolutely. character and honor Absolutely. and like hold a high standard. Absolutely. But then sometimes when I'm, I'm not allowed to say something, I'm like, but this is just honesty. Right. I just want to have and open this conversation. And even as a Christian, can I not struggle with this? Can I not find humor in this? Can I not look at it from this approach and just ask the question? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's not right. But let me talk it out, flesh it out, laugh <laughs> it out, whatever, to find the the the, the answer or how I'm going to talk about talk to God about it. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You should have your own podcast. I'm telling you, <laughs> this is. We, we, we've all fallen in love with you as a sister and a friend since you were little. Mm -hmm. You've experienced some of our nation's and world's greatest comedians. Let me ask you this. If you would be real, mm -hmm. have you laughed the hardest around the comedians who were not part of the church than, than around you know, comedians who are part of the church. Here's my point. If God created laughter and we all know, most of us know the positive things and the health benefits mm -hmm. from laughter. Why is it that the world may experience greater laughter than the church? Oh, preach on that. that for me, it's, I grew up in the, in the eighties and nineties and there was a comedy show called Deaf Comedy Jam. Mm -hmm. And it's primarily set in the urban African-American context. Mm -hmm. And in on this show, it was notorious for just people laughing hard. Yeah. Uh, even in Living Color did a spoof on them and a lady was laughing so hard she was pregnant and the baby shot out <laughs> while she was laughing. <laughs> and uh, But that's just how, pe how hard people yeah. laugh. And for the life of me, I, ju I just want to see the church yeah. experience the type of laughs that yeah. that Deaf Comedy Jam had, the 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 laughs that kept Full House mm -hmm. on air for so yeah. long. And then we had to run it back with Fuller House. I mean, it's just the yeah. laughter, the joy, yeah. and the mirroring of just family. 
Yeah. What that brought. I'm like, why can't the church experience that? Yeah. Well, I feel like we're going to experience it more with you. Because <laughs> now more people are even going to go go run to to watch your comedy. And knowing that, I don't want to call it a safety, but like, I love the fact that you're a pastor. So it just, because there's going to be some, there's going to be truth in there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, but but I, I would, yes. But I would also add to that, yes, a little pushback. If all of us are supposed to be light, shouldn't that happen with all of us? And whatever we do, I think if we take the name of Christ, there should be a stamp of, um, or, or a habit of not, like, you know, when I listen to this person, I know I'm going to get something. I mm -hmm. know I'm not just going to get a feel good, but I'm going to be inspired in some way. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. cool. you know, it's like, let your light shine. So when people see what you do, they kind of look towards the Lord. That's that should be in yes. book somewhere. So how are you going to help us find new ways to laugh this year? <laughs> Let's go. So <laughs> the, one of one of the greatest things is um, and I think one of your. Uh, the Bennett's said this, yes. they talked about family and loneliness and how uh, j just I, I view this man, mental health and health aware, uh, just mental health awareness is so huge right now. And last, I think it was a previous podcast where he talked about how um, just the number one um, unhealthy trait that's going on now is no longer heart disease, but it's loneliness. Mm -hmm. uh, and God created us for relationships. Yep. He said, it's not good for man to be alone. And the, in particular, the area of family and pastor Bennett referenced Psalm 68 that uh, he'll bring the loneliness to families. So the idea here is what, what, what Terry and I want to do is as we look at families is how can we help healthy families grow in particular marriages. So we've created this thing called vow to laugh and it's, it's helping couples laugh. Why, while they deal with the angst that show mm -hmm. up in marriage, it's oftentimes we're all going to have hard times in yep. relationships, but who says hard times have to be really hard. In other words, there's a, it, it can come with, I know I need vitamin C, but it doesn't have to be disgusting. I'll right. Add, you know, right. Let me add, yeah. you know, some lemon drops with it. Yep. And so the idea with Vow to Laugh is we're going to laugh. We're going to make this Vow to Laugh together, help marriages laugh while we deal with the realities of the difficulties in marriage. Mm, I love that. Yeah. So where are we finding Vow to laugh. Vow to laugh. You just go and search all things vow to laugh or just Jason Earls and all okay. of it follow. Perfect. And we'll put a link in our yep. show notes. Yep. Okay. This has been a great conversation and so fun. <laughs> and we wrap up all of our shows and the final episode of this season with a listener question. Yeah. So here it is. I hope it's real. Well, let's take a look. <laughs> this is from a 19 year old girl who says, Hey, my name is Abby. Hi, Abby. What's up, girl? I've started my freshman year in college and I'm now in my second semester. Hmm. I tend to follow Jesus when we're on breaks, but then I get back and I decide to act different. I try to strive to stay connected to Jesus, but I always feel like I fail. Any advice? That's so good. First of all, again, that was very honest. Yeah, that was really honest. In fact, that's actually my story. Uh, I was a kid who... You know, I committed to a relationship with Jesus when I was eight years mm -hmm. old. My dad would say I would fall asleep. He would come in my room and I would fall asleep with my Bible on my chest mm -hmm. reading it. And he would take it off, turn my light out. But then this thing called, what do you call it? Puberty. <laughs> <laughs> Puberty hit and I just wanted to be cool. And so I wanted to fit in. And what I realized is that not only did um, Yahweh Jehovah continue to be my God, but I also had another one that was called swagger or fitting in. And I mm -hmm. wanted to fit in so bad that I began to compromise my, my allegiance to, to God, the God of the Bible, the creator of this un of the universe. And so there's a reality that all of us fall short of this. Mm -hmm. And you said that you have a relationship with Jesus. I, I would challenge a little bit of your, your, your your theology in a sense and theology is fun it's not this heavy word but you use the word you want to stay connected with jesus 
if Jesus has connected to you, you connected to him, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so just yeah, know that good. there's nothing that you can do to separate you from the love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, the reality is that things that we can do that can get in the way. And so I would say to you, man, first of all, continue with, to do what you do. Be honest. I think what changed my life is when I was a sophomore in college <clears throat> and the Lord really began to expose my heart to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I really didn't. And, and sh she's different than me because I didn't want to do right. Mm -hmm. It was, I knew what the Bible said, but it's like, I enjoy um, these sins that I'm doing mm -hmm. and I don't want to stop. And so I pray the realest prayer probably to date that I've ever prayed. And I simply, this was at church. I went down, this is old school church. I went down, got on my knees and I said, God, I love you. I know one day when I get married and have kids, I'm going to follow you with my <laughs> everything. I know it. But right now, God, I don't want to. Yeah. I do this. And when I do it, I ask you to forgive me, knowing that I'm going to go back and do it again. I do this. And I try to make excuses that you made it and it's from the earth. So if you didn't want me to use it, you know, why did you put it here? I like I, I yeah. make excuses. But ultimately, uh, Galatians 5, the deeds of the flesh are very evident. Like, you know. Yeah. And so I just said, God, teach me to not to do these things. Mm. God, put it. In, I need your help. I'm so bad. I, I want to serve you one day, but right now I don't want to put it inside me to want to do right. Help me. Mm -hmm. Teach me not to do these things. And God just began to just open my mind. I began to listen to uh, Christians on the radio and, um, and just just began to randomly, randomly run into messages that were dealing with this stuff that I struggled with. And uh, slowly, the Lord just began, slowly but swiftly, the Lord began to shift my heart. So I would say, man, don't leave God out in where you are. You know, yeah. like consistently talk to him, be honest. But then also know this, that Jesus said this, whoever desires to be my disciple must pick up his cross, deny himself and follow me. As a disciple, as a follower of Christ, it does take you saying to yourself, no. And that's why I'm so grateful that you brought Kier, um, Kira on mm -hmm. to talk about health. Because one thing I realized I needed to deny myself of is sugar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so when Kira all. was on the podcast, I was like, thank you for sending her to my to help Don't me <laughs> be disciplined I and know. exercise. That that was such a great answer. There's really not much I can add to that, but I love that uh I love everything that you said to Abby. And I will I will I will add this to add it. On, having girl. having three kids that are uh just a little bit older than you, but you're 19 years Years old. Um, and I don't say this in any way as an excuse for you, mm. Abby, but I know in watching my children, I've watched the ebb and flow of their relationships with Jesus. Mm. And I love that you said, once you, you said you had the relationship, like you are connected Absolutely. and there's no way you, you won't be connected because he's connected to you. Mm -mm -mm. And, and in those years, you're going to be pushed and pulled in so many different directions. So many. And what I want you to remember is who you surround yourself with. Mm. It's a, it's a massive key that when uh, who you hang out with truly can become your identity. So pick and choose your friends wisely and be aware of what you listen to and what you watch, because those are all things that just keep pulling you or can pull you away from the relationship that I hear you genuinely desire to have with God. And just keep track of those, the people in your life that you know are going to encourage you, that you know, whether that's mom and dad, whether that's your yeah. brother, or it's that one friend that you're not as close to, yeah. but you know, they're like solid in your faith. Keep going back and talking to them. She who walks with wise men and women would be wise, but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Yeah. That's what I realized. I needed. There were times where my friends were still my friends, but I had to recognize when they started talking about X, I needed to remove myself from their presence. Yeah. 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 
And that's the great thing about maturity. Everyone wants to like be young and be young, but listen, <laughs> there's so much wisdom that comes with maturity. So, you know, do your best in your college years yeah. and God's with you. He, he's never leaving you. Absolutely. And you'll continue to gain wisdom and maturity in some of those decisions that you'll have to make along the way. And I would suggest <laughs> that you hang out with Candace <laughs> and Tara Lee, you know, walk through the Bible. It's yeah. uh, you, you have people to walk with at your disposal. You do. Thanks for that. Jason, thank you so much oh, for being on the show. Thank you. This was fun. It was great. And and remember, everyone, as you reset your body, mind, and, and soul this year, remember that laughter is one of the best mm. things for your soul. Laughter is the best medicine. Uh, it can bring you through a lot. It sure, certainly has in my life for so many years. And I'm grateful for people like you that make me laugh. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. And remember, if you've been following along for a while, you've heard me say over and over again, life is like a roller coaster. And it's so true. Woo! <laughs> so we are going to wrap up this series we have with a free reset guide for you at mm. Candice.com. It's full of tips and quotes from all of our season's guests. And when you get it, you'll be able to join our email list. Every week, we send out show notes, ideas, and we even answer some listener questions on there too, so you don't want to miss it. Just go to Candice.com to find the link, and it's all in our show notes. Until next time, be grateful all day, every day. This has been a Candace Cameron Bure podcast, a production of Candy Rock Entertainment. Some of the products and services mentioned are paid promotions. Any advice should be confirmed with a qualified professional. Opinions and ideas are for entertainment purposes only and belong to Candy Rock Entertainment. All rights reserved.